Hello, I am Cohen Lucero, the president of, and CEO, oh, also founder of Team and Racism. I'm happy to be talking with you both today. Would you like to introduce yourselves? My name is Anaji Artis. I use he, him pronouns, and I am one of the authors of a kid's book about climate change. I'm Olivia Greenspan. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the other author of a kid's book about climate change. How do you two know each other? That's a great question. <laughs> um, yeah, so Olivia and I are both from Connecticut, um, and we met. Um, because we were both involved in organizing um, for different causes for climate justice and sustainability. Um, but Olivia, do you want to say more on that? Yeah. So I feel so proud to know Zanaji because I actually read about him in the New York Times. Have you read the New York Times, Cohen? Oh, no. No? It's a big newspaper where all the most important people are written about. And I read about Zanaji in this really important newspaper. And so I sent him a message because I thought the work he was doing was so cool, just like your work with Team and Racism. And the rest is history. Why are you passionate about climate change? My guess is because climate change is a big deal. I'll let Zanaji speak for himself, but for me, I'm passionate about working on the problem of climate change because it's a big deal, like you say. It affects every single part of Earth on this planet that we all share. And so to me, there's um, no problem as big as climate change, which means we need as many people as possible uh, helping to fix this problem. Zanaji, what about you? Yeah, so I'm so passionate about addressing climate change because it is a big deal. It affects everything in our lives. Um, and it really affects people a lot. It affects the water that we drink, the air that we breathe. It affects everything from th the biggest oceans to the smallest insects. And so really everything that we call the environment uh, is affected by climate change. And that's why it's so important to think about. How long did it take you to write the book? Yeah, it, it depends from at what point you start, Cohen. I think the writing took like six months, but Zanaj and I, um, you know, before that had talked about writing this book and having it published for about a year before that. So, uh, you know, Zanaj, he's really an expert in young people's role in the climate justice movement. He, he validated for me this need uh, for a book about climate change for kids that didn't, didn't shy away from the really big deal <laughs> that climate change is. How are rising CO2 levels affecting the earth? Yeah, so they're affecting earth in a big way. And basically, um, any time that we use energy, unless it's coming from a renewable source like solar or wind, um, we're causing CO2 emissions. And so that CO2 goes up into the air um, and then it starts to heat up the planet. Um, so CO2 is surrounding Earth just like air is. And it's like a blanket around the Earth. And when sun comes in, can pass through the CO2, um, but it can't escape. And so the heat gets trapped on Earth and it starts to warm up the planet. Um, so that's what CO2 is doing and that's what's called climate change. I like to search for <clears throat> litter. I like to take five minute showers to save water and turn off all the lights because if it's sunny enough, we do not need light. We have light from the sun. What is your personal favorite ways to look after the earth? Um, so for me, I think that really sharing stories um, and using our own voices and telling people why we care so much about earth is my favorite thing to do. I have an organization called Zero Hour that I co-founded a few years ago 
And we started that because we wanted young people to have a voice um, and to be able to share how much they love the planet, um, and why they think that our leaders and our decision makers should take action to address climate change. Um, and so my favorite thing to do is use my voice, but I also, um, I ride my bike, um, I ride the train when I can um, and try to have the least emissions that I can in my own life. I read your book that you mentioned super fast speed trains and clothes that can turn back into soil when they outgrow them. Can you please explain the clothes that can turn back into soil when we outgrow them? Yeah, I know. It's a weird idea, right? Well, Cohen, do you know where your clothes come from? Like this shirt you're wearing, right? If it's cotton, it's made out of a plant. There's certain clothes that are made out of what are called synthetic materials. Crazy word, synthetic. It's kind of hard to say. And those materials cannot turn back into soil. But for clothes that we make out of plants, like cotton, you know about cotton, or linen, which is made out of a plant called flax, or different materials, uh, different plants that we can use to make fabric. If we don't treat it with nasty chemicals, you can actually throw those clothes into a compost bin and the fabric turns back into soil. So basically we use plants to make clothes and if we're nice to those clothes, they can go back to the earth and make new plants that can make new clothes. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. So do you guys have any questions for me? So did you have a, a favorite page in the book um, that you want to show? Okay. Oh, yes. I really like the part where it mentioned like super fast as trains that can travel super fast speed Can because maybe we could we could do that because maybe we could do that like powered very fast by like lots of gears and stuff or lots of things that make stuff go very fast like sonic speed that's awesome and that's also my favorite page um i really like that page um, and I think it's really exciting to think about um, high speed trains too, because you could go really fast um, and ride with lots of people. And then that way you take lots of cars off the road, which create CO2 emissions. Um, so trains are a really great alternative for transportation too. So had you heard about climate change before reading this book? I did one thing on in class on Zoom about water usage. Yeah, what did you learn? Hmm. Always take five minute showers. When tooth washing or washing your hands, always turn off the water. Yeah. And the more water we waste, uh, the less water we will have to drink. For example, Starbucks, it would run out of iced coffee because- Too bad. It needs ice and able to make iced coffee. <laughs> That's new. I love the Starbucks example. So a big part of the book, if you remember, is that the earth is sick. And I was wondering if that's the first time that you heard that the, that the planet is sick and how that made you feel. Ooh, uh, yes, that was the first time hearing that. And it made me feel sad for the earth because I want to make the earth feel better, like give it a treatment. Yeah. For the sickness. Yeah, a treatment for the sickness. That's exactly right. And you, you spoke about a couple treatments. You spoke about uh, conserving water and investing in technology like high speed trains. Have you heard about any other big ideas that are treatments? for the earth? So we could probably use electric cars too. And we could probably make electric airplanes yeah. that are very, that 
are very smooth and can fit a lot of passengers, so we don't have to worry about if airplanes make exhaust. We won't have to worry about that. That's so great. So I, um, I'm from Connecticut, um, which is on the East Coast, and I, right now I'm in Utah, and so I took a plane here, um, but planes have so much exhaust, like you said, um, they create so much CO2 emissions that it's way more than any car does on any day. But I would love to have an electric plane or ride in a super fast train. Um, and that way I could be here in Utah and travel back to Connecticut with no emissions. And I think that would be really great. So that's a great idea. Yes. And I also think of the blanket, like somehow we need to get rid of that warm blanket, gather it all up and like, we need to get rid of that extra CO2 and give the CO2 the CO2 that it needs. Yeah, and actually one thing that's really great at getting rid of CO2 is plants and trees. And so, plants, they do this thing called photosynthesis, and that's how they grow. And so they take sunlight, uh, and they take CO2, and they make oxygen for us. Um, but actually, would love to talk a bit about what we did for the book with trees. Um, so you might know that books um, and paper are made using trees. Um, and so for our book, we decided to partner um, with a group to plant trees and they're called EcoDrive. Um, and basically what they do is plant the number of trees that would be taken away by the amount of paper um, that's used to make these books. Um, and that way we're replacing the, the trees used to make the paper, but we're also planting trees that can take out that bad carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that's causing climate change. Yeah. In one thing I like is that it shows like a little tree, like a little tree, tree right here, like this tree here. You know, if it was real, it could, you know, get rid of all the extra CO2. Cohen, I just can't tell you how smart and observant you are. You can actually measure um, down to a number how much carbon dioxide is in our air. And there is a safe amount. Do you want to guess what the safe amount is? What number? 50? That's actually not, it's not a bad guess. Add a three in front of that. 350. So 350 is called parts per million. PPM is the safe level. And if you see right above that tree, do you see on the front cover? Do you see what number is right above the tree? Oh yes, 350 PPM. Yes, so exactly. So that, that tree right there and things like the trains you mentioned and the clothes turning back into soil and all the other big ideas you mentioned are the, the uh, treatments that will help us heal our planet and get us back to that safe level of 350 ppm. I'm wondering about the uh, 417 ppm. Is that all the CO2 that is adding yes that's right. the current level yeah <laughs> and that's that's risen a lot um in the past several decades and it's because you've been using energy that's being burned and releasing carbon dioxide um so we can get it back to 350 ppm but right now it's really high and it's too high so we need to get it lower Yes, looking at the time, I would like to end the meeting. It's been such an honor being with you guys. Oh, it's an honor to be with you, Cohen. Yes, thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you. I hope you guys have a nice day. You too, Cohen. Goodbye. Thanks.